All right, so I've done a few different layers, a few different versions of effects. And with each of these, you know, it adds a lot of memory, it adds a lot of processing. But here I have an inner glow, a color overlay, and a gradient overlay uh, with a white stroke showing from behind. Now we can see how this looks on the different backgrounds. I kind of like the colors. I think that inner glow is maybe a little too strong. But I do look, like how those colors kind of work to suggest tattoos on um, the black and the gray. So remember what's great about the layer styles is you can go in and adjust them as you need. So I'm just going to take the opacity down a little bit. Yeah, that's looking better. And I'm going to increase the noise. So I want it to be kind of grainy. And then you can see it in the preview. That's looking nice. I like that. That's what I was kind of hoping for. And this is just a linear gradient color running behind. Uh, let's see. Let's let's try to break it up a little bit more now that I'm up close. By increasing the, the jitter and the range. Come on. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. To my taste. Okay. So that looks pretty good on the black, but on the other colors, it seems to lose its contrast, right? So here's a nice little trick we can do. And this goes to Thomas's uh, question at the beginning of class. Can we isolate one of these layer styles as its own thing? So I'm going to take my final type, copy, which is the one with the white stroke. And I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to move that up on top of everything else. right? And then I'm going to change that stroke from white to black and then do a, a color overlay that changes the black, the black fill of my type to white. Come on, open up. All right, so first thing I'll do, a color overlay, 100% white. So it's finding all these variations with our type. Never changing the shape of it, but playing with all the different ways we can outline it, we can shade it, we can color it. It's like digital coloring. But now I'm doing kind of color holds. I'm going on top of the black line and replacing it with white. <laughs> it will just do what I'm asking. Okay, now I'm going to change the stroke to be inside instead of outside. And then I'm going to change its color to be black instead of white. So I'm kind of inverting my, my black type with a white stroke and making it white type with a black stroke. But instead of it being on the outside, now it's on the inside. But you can see that that's a little problematic for my type choices. I get all these little stars. So maybe I want, instead of inside, though I do like what it does with all the spikes, maybe I want to split the difference and say center. 
and that looks better. Because I want to find a way to get this black outline back into my colored type, even though the type itself was solid, right? So let's see, do I like inside or do I like center better? That's tricky. I think I like center better. But I'm going to make it just slightly smaller. And if I really want to customize it, I could do this for each individual letter form. Okay, now here's the trick. How do I isolate it so I just have that, that new black outline? I basically made a tracing of my type, right, in black. And so how can I isolate that black so I can use it on top of all my color effects? So I just want to add that black line in, but I don't want the white. And the only way to do that is to make a copy of your effects. I'm going to duplicate that layer, turn off the one underneath, and then right click and rasterize the layer style. So this will turn all of those pixels or all of that kind of automatically generated stroke and color fill into just pixels in the layer that I can then edit. And then I can use the magic wand with contiguous turned off and select all the whites in that layer and then just delete them. And that will leave me with that black outline, just as pixels. So I have kind of a, a black center stroke and a white outside stroke, helping it to, you know, look good <laughs> on whatever the background is. Okay, then I can play with that stroke itself. So that black stroke, maybe if I feel it's too heavy, I can change it to Let's see, a dissolve layer style or layer overlay, and then just set it like 88%, kind of like a tattoo, so it's just a little grainy. Let's do 86. And so these are the ways you can kind of customize the color version of your type. Now let's see how that looks on gray. The graininess is kind of hard for the computer to, to render. So if I duplicate that and then select both those layers and merge them, sometimes that will work to soften them a little bit. Or I can even, that's a, a way of um, rasterizing, if you will, the, the layer style. What's another name for these? Because layer styles is what we're calling the effects. So like the layer um, overlay. So now if I want to soften it a little bit, I can just go to filters. The only filter we use consistently in the class is Gaussian blur, right? Then I want to take that way down. Just soften it a tiny bit. And then maybe duplicate that. There we go. So it's not quite so 
hard for the computer to to render it with all those solid pixels and contrast next to each other. I can also, of course, take its opacity down. There we go. Kind of like that. And I could also give it a color overlay if I wanted to. This is just to get that little kind of black outline around my type. So I like that. It's a little strong where all the sawtooth are. but without going in individually and kind of adjusting the color and the stroke on those, I think that's pretty good. Okay, now I'm gonna take all of those color layers, right? Holding down shift, I'm trying to select multiple layers, there we go. And I'm gonna put them all into a folder. Come on, there we go. So that I have my color type on one layer and my black type on another. Give me an empty folder at the top here too. All right, so. Now, if I duplicate that folder, Command-J, just like you would duplicate a layer, should probably save soon, <laughs> um, and then merge the layers in that folder together by right-clicking and merging. Now I have it, just like my black type, I have it all on one layer, which is helpful. Why is that helpful? Well, because then I can do little hand-done alterations, like dodging and burning. All these things we've learned. I'm going to take a soft brush, pretty large. I'm working at pretty high resolutions here, at an exposure of less than 30. And I'm going to burn the bottom of these a little, just the mid-tones. So each one feels kind of individually adjusted instead of just relying on the gradients. So again, it's a way of kind of customizing your type. This is done on a copy. So I can always play with its opacity and blending it in. And the goal is for it to work on the white background, on the black background, and on the, the gray background. So the difference that makes, then I can do the same thing with dodging, and I can brighten the, the mid-tones on the highlights. Again, very soft, because these tools are powerful, and an exposure of less than 30. I'm just going to hit little edges, just the mid-tones. I don't want to go to white, just like the little corners are catching light. And I'm overdoing it a little bit, but that's why it's on a separate layer. It's hard not to overdo the dodging and burning. So just all the ways we can customize type. Just like when we were doing Duotone for our spot illustrations.